CataractCoach.com. We have a trifocal eye well and a very highly myopic patient. We're implanting the most extreme power panoptic lens available. And hey, the patient's a doctor too. So filling up the eye here with our viscoelastic, that's a dispersive agent. We're now going to make our temporal incision. This patient has a steep axis of astigmatism at 180 degrees. So we'll use our diamond keratome to create a very nice incision exactly on that meridian. At the end of the case, we'll make an LRI on the opposite side to help treat the astigmatism fully. Now we need to get a nice round capsular X here. We're adjusting the light on the microscope to get a better red reflex. And we're gonna aim for a nice five millimeter capsular axis. You wanna be very careful here in this eye. Use the measuring marks on the forceps to get it accurate. This is a large eye. It's about a 30 millimeter axial length and the anterior segment's large too, large white to white measurement and very good and big dilation. So by measuring this, capsular X and aligning it over that Purkinje image, we're going to get an ideal outcome. That looks great. And so now we'll do some hydro dissection. This patient's cataract is not too dense. The patient's actually relatively young. The rest of the eye exam is normal. The retina is normal, the macula, the retinal periphery. We even had our retinal colleagues examine the retina in detail before surgery. You see, we've done gentle hydro dissection to prolapse part of the nucleus out of the capsule bag. And now we're going to get the phaco probe in there, and we're going to emulsify this cataract. You also notice we have great draping, no eyelashes are visible, lid margin is sequestered. There's the nucleus using the chopper to help split it in pieces, and then push it in front of the phaco probe, and we can emulsify this relatively easily. Everything looks great here. You also notice that the incision barely nicks the limbo vessels, and that ensures great long-term healing and stability. Chopper now in the safe position. Look at the position of the chopper to help protect that posterior capsule. And that looks great. We come out of the eye, and notice that we come out of the eye and we don't let the anterior chamber collapse. A little bit of lens material left. We'll take this out with the irrigation aspiration probe. And we can use the spatula or chopper if we need to to help push those pieces down the port. Now when we do the cortex removal, very important, we have to plan long-term stability. We want 50 years of great visual outcome for this patient. So what we're doing is we're doing the cortex cleanup and we're looking at the capsular rexus edge, making sure it doesn't move. And this patient has very nice, strong zonular support. And this patient did very well. We'll also clean up the underside of the anterior capsule rim, do a little capsule polishing. Of course, we're being judicious and very careful. You know, this capsule is a very thin tissue. As you know, the posterior capsule is only four microns in, in uh, thickness. And we've got to be very delicate about that. So that looks great, cleaning that up. A little bit of viscoelastic remaining. We'll get that out at the very end. And now the lens here is a six diopter panoptics lens. And that is the most extreme power that Alcon makes in this lens. Six diopters is meant, of course, for a very myopic patient, and that's our patient. And as luck would have it, with the lens calculations, six diopters will be the perfect lens power. There's, there's filling up our caps or bag with our viscoelastic. And here comes the lens. We'll dive out into the caps or bag. Now, lens calculations in these eyes are also a little bit more challenging. And you can't use your standard lens calculations. You need to be able to use a more novel approach like we use here, the lattice super formula with the artificial intelligence. And so we have the benefit of that as well as crowdsourced data. And so we know we'll be accurate with the lens calculations. So the lens is in the capsule bag. It looks great. Note we've placed the haptics at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Um, that's the patient's 12 and 6. On your screen, it's horizontal. The reason is we need to center up these diffractive rings in the patient's visual axis. So we went behind the lens there to remove viscoelastic. Now we'll go in front of the lens. That looks great. And clean out all the viscoelastic from the eye. That looks really nice. And you see those uh, Purkinje images. We're going to center those up on that diffractive optic in the center of that. So that's been very nicely cleaned out, no more viscoelastic. And you can see it's a nice overlap of the 
capsular access on top of the optic. Sealing up the main incision here, which do a little bit of stromal hydration of the cornea back and forth. This is, of course, just balanced salt solution. That looks great. Flushing out the anterior chamber, making sure there's no retained viscoelastic. And notice how a lot of people just quit right here and call it done. But we want to perfect this. Spend the extra couple of minutes. Let's make sure we get that optic beautifully centered. The better we have that optic centered in the visual axis, the better the visual performance. So those are the Prakinji images. You can see we line it up and we're just nudging the lens ever so slightly. And I keep checking the position of those Prakinji images. I want them in that central ring of that optic. And now just to be doubly sure, we'll change to just the coaxial lighting. I'll center it up and I'll have the patient fixate on those two lights or between those two lights. And when the patient does that, you can see those are beautifully centered in that central ring of the optic. I can make a slight adjustment to get it even more perfect. And that is right there, spot on perfect. So sealing up the incisions, and that looks great. Let's put a little medicine in the eye. Here's a little triam Sinlone going inside the anterior chamber, only 0.5 milligrams. We'll swirl that around with some more balanced soft solution. And then the last thing is we'll put a little bit of preservative-free moxifloxacin as an antibiotic to prevent infection. Wexel sponge soaked in tetracaine, and that's going to help seal the main incision. But also, we need to anesthetize there at the top of your screen the patient's nasal aspect. So we're going to make an opposite 180-degree um, meridian LRI. So there's the LRI, and we're going to make, make it just there at 500 microns. Beautiful. Again, using a diamond. And now let's check everything with the Wexel sponges. That looks dry and complete, and that's dry and sealed up well. And that is a beautiful case.